What up, guys? This is Casey Israel again, and this is part 26 of consoles, games, and stories from my life. Today is about the Atari 7800 Pro system. Um, uh, I picked this up like four years ago at a flea market. I've been trying to get this for several years. Uh, one of the big pluses about the system, not only will play 7800 games, it'll play, be backward compatible to the 2600 games. And you can actually use, if you're going to play 2600 games, you can use the, the old Atari joystick, and also it would own, you could use the Sega Genesis controller but it would only work on the 2600 games. Too bad it won't work on the 7800 games because there were some games it really could utilize the D-pad and uh, the A and B button. So, and I even tried the Master System uh, controller. I think it had the same thing, but I'm don't remember anymore, but, uh, yeah, trying to pick up the system was a hell of a nightmare. I mean, you could think this is dirty. There's actually, well, the freaking thing is actually coming up, but, uh, there's a little plastic film over this, so it makes it, I guarantee if I take it off, it'll look a little bit cleaner, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty badass. I mean, uh, I hear if I want to try to have this mod, it's actually a little harder than modding uh, your normal Tar 2600 because I would like to at least make it uh, AV capability, but uh. Let's go look at the box and the games. And here's the box. This is the one that came with my system. I think I not had them. I think I paid 30 bucks for this get up for. I think that's a pretty good deal. Maybe I paid 50 give or take. Uh, it was real hard to get this. Especially the box as well. But you could tell, you know, that updated joystick, even having two buttons on each side. Uh, they learned their lesson from the generation before with the Atari 5200, where it had buttons on the side. Well, I guess they kind of didn't, but they also had a, a number keypad right there. And then the uh, joystick was really not that great on 5200, and, uh, one of the biggest thing about the Atari 7800, here's the fun fact, it had been crazy what the, this was gonna potentially have an add-on. I believe my 7800's not the one that's capable to do that. But there's on the, on one of the sides, you take it off and, uh, hook in a laser disc. So, I guess that'd be like something, I'm like, a laser disc add-on? Like, I'm like, I don't even think this thing had the power to do anything with a laser disc. At least, um, Sega Genesis had some help with the Sega CD because it, I mean, it had a power supply. I believe you can have the AV coming out of the Sega, out of the Sega CD. So, I don't know how they were planning to do this laser disc add-on. But, um... This is the back of it. Actually, this box is not bad shape. And these are the games right here. Bunch of good games. 
better version of Pat Miss Pac-Man. Parata. I, this, that one's really hard to pronounce. And this is like their version of 8-bit system. I mean, it just falls below behind the NES capabilities. The NES actually was more superior to the 7800, while the Sega Master System was the most powerful system of the ser of the generation. But, you know, for Atari 7800, you know, I think it could have done good if they let this release out a couple years before the NES. I mean, they could have beat them to the punch, but they held out. They actually had this ready to go two years before the NES, and they're like, the Atari was... Uh, just thinking about doing computers, and then they were saying how good Nintendo was doing. They're like, "Okay, let's release on the eight hundred. People know about Tar twenty six hundred. I mean, this has the backward compatible to the twenty six hundred game, so this is gonna sell like gangbusters. Honestly, it should have that they released it when they were able to, you know, but." They didn't, and that's why it failed. And then he would call their games Super Game, apparently, or Pro Games. But, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty badass box. Really, see, it says right there, it plays all 2600 games. Yeah, they did call those, some of those games, super games. I think they had a extra chip, kind of like how Nintendo would put a special kind of chip to make their game a little bit more powerful, or like how, like, Super Nintendo would have the FX uh, chip to, where you can play Donkey Kong Country good, and, like, uh... What is it? Star Fox. So, the from the leader in video games. I mean, I would agree with a lot of that, where they had those bullet points. So, it's a pretty damn cool box. But, um, yeah, I... Yeah, I, my system is... Hey, you see that? Is not capable to do the, have the add on. So let's go look at some of the games. I got m most of the Atari 7800 games. There's a couple that I don't have, but I have most of them. Foo Fight. Uh, that's actually the people who made. The 7800 was a company that's it has a history. I think General Computers uh, did a lot of things like they did uh, have a uh, a hack version of Pac Man on arcades and like uh, some version of uh, God, what's it called? Missile Command, like where it's crazy version of it. And Tari sued them, and then eventually they brought them in to help with Atari. And they're, that same company made Atari 7800. And one of their games they made was Food Fight, and I think Food Fight's okay. You got Hat Trick. Rampage, I love Rampage. Ball Lasers, kind of like, uh, got that. Mar uh, that uh, 3D world game from the NES. It's it's pretty good for the 7800. Like I said, Miss Pac-Man is a great version of it. 
Do I have sports, like real sports baseball? Centipede's always a good game. Choplifter. Oh, my God. Choplifter. And here's a fun fact. Uh, it's funny when they were, I guess Atari had, had still had some rights to some of the games like Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong Jr. They must have had some, uh, co contract that they had some rights to still use those games and, uh, other systems and future systems because this came out after Nintendo came out with the NES. So it's kind of interesting about the history. This is why this history stuff, game history is just interesting to me. That And that's one of the reasons why. We got F-18 Hornet 101 Summer Games Karataka. That's a very good game. Oh, that's very... It's amazing how that ran on 7800. Fight Night. You got Football. Xenomorph. Good game. Z Z it's one of those freaking words I can't pronounce. Zaxivs. Uh, the Winter Games. Then you got Super Huey, Barn Blasters, Jinx, Matt Mania, Robotron 2084. Alright, before... And then Double Dragon. Alright, I got a little bit of history about Double Dragon and Atari. Me and my wa late wife, we were at the flea market. And there was this... I think it's just right... It's in a town, I think it's called... It's just right outside Strasburg. I think it's called Slayington. Or is that the town that I was thinking? That's outside Lee Heighton. But uh, I know it's out Stra outside Strasburg. It's a big uh, outdoor flea market. And there's this guy with like a kind of U-Haul. Uh, he had a U-Haul. And we went inside, looked around, and I saw Double Dragon for the Atari 2600. Like, no, this can't be Double Dragon like the NES version. And yeah, it's Double Dragon. And um, I think he wanted eight twenty or $18. And I was like, do I really want to spend that much on an Atari game? And I was going back and forth, I eventually didn't do it, and I always kick myself in the ass for not getting it, but uh, I saw this, I was like, oh, cool, it's on 7800, still, this is not the, the NES still is superior to this version of Double Dragon, but I eventually did get the Double Dragon for the Atari 2600, and I actually paid I believe I paid more, but I learned my lesson. So, oh, God. It's amazing to find out about Double Dragon and being on other systems than the NES. Then Summer Games. Dig Dug. Dig Dug's always a good game to play. And Glacka. Same thing. It's always to play Glacka. Oh, love those games. Gotta show my, off my Atari 3D printed logo. And I think I got some couple box games. Let's look real quick. Down here is kind of a mix mosh of box games. I mean, I got some in, in television games, and then from here, here, this way, in town is Atari games. So, I'm going to try to get to the 7800s. I believe the 7800 games are right here. So, I'm going to pull those out. I just want to show you guys something. Here's the thing about Atari and their boxing. They're a little confusing. I mean, you really have to read what it says. What the color of the 
box. You can easily think. I mean, god dang, look at that. Don't you think you can probably get that mixed up of which system that is without reading the box? I mean, I mean, you had, definitely have to read what it says on the box. And the same thing on the cartridge. You have to look at the cartridge. If you have Atari 2600 and you don't have... If you have 7800, that's not a problem no more because you can play both. But if you just have the normal Atari 2600, you have to look at the cartridge and see if it if it's a 2600 game or if it's a 7800 game. But let's move on. Uh, some of these boxes are non greatest shape, but Joust. Oh, Joust is a good game. Good uh, arcade game. And then, obviously, uh, Asteroids. Come on. Asteroids is a good game as well. I mean, classic. I mean, I got a deal for four bucks. Definitely a superior version than the 2600 version. Pole Position 2. Oh, God. Pole Position. I love... I even love the arcade version of Pole Position. And I recently picked this one up. Ace of Aces. I did not play this one. But I didn't have it loose. And I love boxes, but I was like, oh, man, dude, it's crushed. So I haggled the guy, and I worked, I always buy stuff from the guy. So I was like, hey, uh, the box is crushed. Can I get it for five? And I was getting, I believe I was getting a couple other things. And, yeah, he he worked the deal with me. I mean, great guy at this one store, so, um. I love going to his place, but, yeah, uh, I'm gonna show you about what's the, what you have to look on the Atari 7800 games, so I'm gonna, just give me a second. Alright, see, this is what I'm talking about, I mean, the cartridge is exactly the same, I mean, yes, this one's in bold letter, uh, numbers, but, I'm like, yeah, this is a normal Atari game. I mean, one of the clues is, like, look at the date. It's 1978. That's when, uh, Tower 2600 came out. And then, obviously, like I said, there's bold letters, uh, bold numbers. And also look at the date as well. And then you're getting, like, this is when you really have to look at it, where it says, for Atari 7800. And here's where it's getting, they kind of started tricking you a little bit. Uh, it says for Atari 2600, 7800 series. So, te I guess technically this is a 2600 game. So, but they're trying to uh, sell this as, you know, that you can play it both on the 2600, 7800. And then it, it's getting harder to see what it says. That's four seventy eight hundred. And then as well for this one is F eighteen Hornet for the Atari seventy eight hundred. And you, and one of the biggest tales. What's the if you're gonna run into if it's a seventy eight hundred game? Their uh, labels are. Definitely different. They're gray, silverish. The, the normal ones are gray and silverish, while normal uh, Atari games are more black. So I mean, so if you, like I said, if you have twenty six hundred, you got to look out what it says on these cartridges. But if you got the seventy eight hundred, that problem's been eliminated. So, um, God, this was fun. I, did, I didn't think I was going to have much to talk about on 7800, but this was fun. But thanks for watching. Bye.